So uh, my name is Chen Fu Wen from Red Hat Company, uh, located in Beijing. And uh, today I want to present one topic about import the people across China by open source. So just I mentioned that I uh, work for Red Hat in Beijing, so I have a bunch of experience in Oracle, Motorola, or Siemens. So this is the agenda today. First part, I will introduce um, how a large country is moving to an open source management site and embark the open source journey. Second part, I will dive in how open source and China attract each other mutually and kick it off. The third part is show some open source experiment in the high school education. The final part, the look, let's take a closer look forward to the future. So embark the open source journey. So I think most of them heard of China, but even of them, some of them being there. So China, right from the demography or geography, is a big and huge country. It uh, almost 1.1 million people now. And each year, there are about 6 million college graduate students. So it's huge. So this kind of college graduate student is a potential pool to the open source contributors. So you may think that it's easy for one country to embark the open source journey, but actually it's not. It's special in the country with a long history, traditional culture, and history. So about 2,200 uh, years ago, the first emperor Qin Shi Huang united China as a country. Let China embark the civilization journey. About 40 years ago, the great man Deng Xiaoping, uh, this one, to adopt the open and reform policy and let China unlock the people position and unlock the open source as well. So you may wonder how the policy open impacts open source abstraction and let China embark the open source journey. Here I provide two blocks to understand it more. Firstly, is the door open, the door open policy is also impacts the internal migration within the channel. So a lot of people just the migration from the rural area to the uh, urban area, from the west to the east. So for, as for myself, I was born in South China, and I study and work at the North China of Beijing. So this kind of migration within the channel brings some diversity and inclusiveness. So I think that diversity and inclusiveness is one of the uh, fundamental uh, principles in open source. So another, another block to understand that is that the door open to the outside world, outside China. So a lot of students just go below the study. They study in USA, they study in Europe. This kind of people, when they study outside, they just expose themselves to the open side, open side community. They learn a lot. When they come back to China, they just work as the catalyst for the open source. So they bring a lot of ideas, some kind of principles, some organized, organized abilities to promote open source in China. So what like, look like the people life now? In many cities in China, people use the uh, local social network uh, WeChat to do social connection. They use the uh, highway to do business traveling among China. They also use the dogless bicycle to uh, go from the subway to their office. They use the a lot, they almost buy, early, uh, buy a lot of things by online shopping. So what's the open source value to common people? Just my topic say that open source import the people across China. So open source value to common people is can just demonstrate him. Uh, so people really touch and feel the open source power just begin with Android platform. 
You know that uh, in China, a lot of people, just the picture shown that a farmer, they use the Android phone to connect, to the connection. And also in local China, in China local, there are a lot of manufacturers that produce mobile phone, such as Huawei or Xiaomi. So whether from the individual people or the enterprise, they just get a lot of empower from the open source, just enjoy. So in China, many enterprises and uh, business really believe that open source can add value to their business and their customer. So this can be demonstration or evidence by, the, by their membership in the Open Source Community Foundation. You can see in the Linux Platinum membership, they are far away, decent. Even in the CNCF Platinum membership, there are Alibaba Cloud, Fire Cloud, and even in the OpenStack board of directly, they will have many of uh, several people from the China. So beyond the consumer the open source project, they also contribute to some. This is an, a list of some For example, Huawei company, they have a number three contribution by a company in the OpenStack queen list. And uh, they will have some, a lot of contribution in the Hadoop open source project. They even initiated some open source project here, and also there are some other companies from the trend. Even in the kernel patch, this is the background showing that the patch from China is long to force in the kernel patch. So the second one is how they attract each other, open source and China. So I just start with some analysis on uh, source of market. So I just follow the model from economic. We know that in the economic area, there is a model supply and demand. Also in the software market in China, from the demand point of view, many enterprises experience digital and business transformation by next generation technology, such as computing, big data, and AI. So from supply point of view, uh, mostly those software dominated, dominated by the potato software as uh, soft companies. But since it changed about several years ago, now the business software in China migrated from the proprietary dominated software to some product or service supported by open source project. Previously, we can see most of business software controlled by the IOE, IBM, Oracle, and the MSC, or Microsoft and VMware in China. Migrated to some products, for example, uh, KVM. They use KVM to build up their IS layer in the computing. And even for the OS, they use Fedora, CentOS, Ubuntu. Uh, they use a lot of CNCF, uh, Kubernetes, and also. So why I say that let open source and China attach, attach each other? Because this can be evidenced by some global companies holding in China. Since the 2007, uh, this, conf this conf uh, conference, the RC3, uh, was held once each year. So this is the open to global people. So you can submit your paper, and if you are lucky, you can accept it, and you have an opportunity to communicate with local contributors, even some local uh, open source uh, leaders. You can see that this conference is a uh, really global one. Even we have KubeConf Shanghai in the 2018. It's also the door is open to all of us here. So you, you can submit the paper, and uh, have a business travel to Shanghai and talk or communicate with the also open source credibility in the China. We also have some storage APAC last year was also held in China. And the COFA paper is open to global. So some, share some open source experiments uh, in a school uh, in China. So when it comes to China, contribution to open source, things are slow, but 
are going to take off. It's just uh, uh, this picture, diamond snatch, is a highway, high speed way. It is slowly take off. But even the, eventually, we are long at very full high speed way. So you, you, you can see that some signal uh, released by government. So the Minister of Education of China, uh, in, in the 2018, they adopted some uh, open source hardware uh, into their national high school new uh, standard. You can expect that open source software will be soon adopted. And we have open source thing. This normally uh, held by a light height company in Beijing. We will invite some college students visit our uh, undersite site and we, the leaders uh, uh, will introduce some open source principles and we have some open source workshops. Just let, let the students start easy, easily to step into the open source contribution. You can see these students from the university. And uh, we all have so free software day. Free software day is the uh, cross China. There are some other companies also participate, such as OpenSUSE or some kind of. So this is me. I present one topic in the Tsinghua University. Tsinghua University is the top one university in China. Uh, current president and the pre previously president both graduated from this university. And uh, so this is another one university. We also have some topic and the com this all these students are from this. Uh, uh, this those people are all students, so they are very passionate about open source. Uh, even some of them already stepped in some projects. We also have open source annual party. We are celebrating open source 20 years. Uh, so the GitHub CEO also attended this celebration. You can see what she said, a great opportunity to meet developers, learn how about so the open source community in China. It will be exciting to see how much creative patience there is for open source in China. And for students, we also have some conference. This kind of conference totally organized by students. And all the participants is from, the, even from the high school students. And uh, even more, they have released some weekly report uh, about open source. This all by done by students. So weekly, they have some release some paper or some big uh, newspaper about open source momentum or some kind of things. So looking for the future. Uh, I quite complain about open source happening in the China because uh, I always believe that the future is in the hand of the younger generation. So in China, born, born after in 1919, there are about zero to, uh, about zero to billion, uh, billion people, a lot of the younger generation. So for the people, younger generation born in, in 1990, there are some attributes that quite close to open source. For example, they are well educated. You know, China adopts one child policy, so they can put, put much more money on their child, <laughs> let them get educated. So, from, even from kindergarten, they have, have opportunity to study English. So, this makes some foundation for the future study, right? They also provide the platform to like, communicate with outside. They are, because they are 
just uh, involve the society so that have some sharing, transparency, open mind, some kind of mindset. Some of them even have some skills because they learn some skills by practice in some global community. So this really laid the foundation for the further contribution to open source. So I believe that people just uh, follow the way what they believe in. So if the younger generation really touch, feel the open source power, they will follow the way naturally. So, so for the people born around uh, 2000, 2000 years, they also very soon they will come play major low in the talent market. The born in mobile in the next time. The, each day they get message mobile uh, by mobile internet phone. They can communicate with outside, even abroad very frequently. They learn the, because the, maybe their classmate start abroad. They often communicate they know the information and exchange the idea. They also were educated. Most important that in China, many, you know that before that many people don't pay the money for the service. But now it seems to change. People like almost now develop some habit to pay for the service. We know that for the open source business model, Normally, we just pay for the service. We don't pay the money for the license, right? So license, we don't pay the service for the, pay the money for the service. So this kind of habit, we are really very close to our business, uh, open source business model. So we also have some changes, uh, challenges, but uh, I would like to regard them as the opportunity. Just uh, please uh, say, uh, please the presenter say that there are a lot of security need addressed in the open source project. Yeah, it, it is, but also it's opportunity right for your for your global blowing up right. And uh, for the open source governance, actually it's a challenge for some Chinese company because uh, they are just uh, stopping for some initiate some open source project, they need to learn a lot of love about it. Because you know that in China, the, there are different law systems to about IP intellectual properties. So they also might some, there are some gap with some international IP law system. This kind, of, this kind of also is a challenge to them. We, of course, we need to more mentor and or more educators to lead them to start in some open source project. But I, I think that after a few years, the mentor or educator, they can come to China itself. Also, from the business, some business enterprise, enterprise uh, normally now a lot of them still use the legacy uh, IT inf inf infrastructure and uh, mostly it's the proprietary software. So when they migrate to open source technology software, they can put games, it needed to send tools easily, let them migrate easily. So even uh, in some area, uh, need some cooperation among open source community and some international standard organization. For example, uh, in the NFV earlier, NFV is related to telecom, right? So telecom also have some requirement about the telecom agent, tele telecom data, or some kind of quota. So hopefully, the open source community can work with the, some international organization, some organization, to cooperate some uh, technique uh, momentum or technique change. 
requirements. Even in the Kangen 5G, yeah, 5G uh, standards, because you know in the telecom, they also needed to sign, uh, make it more agile, so open source project can improve some solution, combined with some standard from the uh, internet, international telecom, some kind of organization. So that's all for my sharing. So we have five minutes left for questions. Any questions? Yeah. Do you all have open projects that uh, use English or also Chinese for programming? For me? Not for programming, the whole time. Chinese. Okay. The question is the that the China initiated open source in the local language Chinese or English, right? Yeah. Uh, mostly, most of is open source is the, by English. I just say that actually uh, most of people have now have opportunity to get educated. They learn the English from some of them from kindergarten, right? <laughs> They'd be, for me, I'm not, I just studying English from junior school. <laughs> So for the younger generation, they, they travel a lot, they study abroad, so don't worry about it. They just can very frequently to communicate with others by English. Yeah. So if you have opportunity to travel to China, you can touch and feel that. Okay, thanks. Yeah, please. So I think I, you mean some students from China? Like, yeah, if, uh, if students from China have contribute or who contribute to the project mm -hmm. are mostly led by Western people, there might be some different culture, maybe in like reading English. Oh, okay, the question is that if some Chinese students contribute some project uh, initiated by the Western, as a company, some kind of, do they have some culture conflict, right? Okay, so I found that hard, so I know that uh, transparency is the most important principle in the governor of the open source project. So if the, open, the project is a priceless principle, I think, yeah, they, they will follow this way, right? It's the ground rules for the open source project. At the beginning, they may feel a little uncomfortable, but people just grow, grow up by learning, right? So they're learning, they can comply with, comply with these rules. I don't think that is a, question, uh, is a problem, yeah. So, number question? Okay, so we end up with this. Thanks all for attending.